Well, thank you so much for this very impressive film with uh, all these layers it has, um, the personal ones, the drug addiction, the friendship, the politics. And um, maybe I start with a quite pragmatic question. When did you decide to do, to start editing the film and how did you organize yourself with this huge amount of material? It was a couple of years after uh, Kimi died when I was able to bring myself to rewatch all the materials from all these many, many years. And in there I saw that the film is somewhere there, I just need to extract it. And, um, well, it was quite a difficult process to organize the material, to start editing, because um, I'm that person who has, you know, like a folder inside the folder inside the folder. <laughs> and somewhere there, there's like the material from 2005. <laughs> yeah. And together with the material from 2011. So it was a big of a mess. And my editor was always not happy about that. But uh, did you start with him right away? Yes. Or mm -hmm. that's the first uh, uh, decision I made that I want to work with this person before I, I start uh, be before I uh, met my producers or anybody else. I knew that I want to work with Kutaiba because. Uh, He's, uh, he's great, he's really talented, and he's kind of person you would, would want to spend like six hours a day together showing your For, private for several position. years. <laughs> yeah, well, not, not years, but yeah, yeah. But how, how long, I mean, my, in my imagination, this took years, like, because getting from one layer to the next layer and slowly bringing out the story and bringing out your thoughts and your... So how, how did it work? How long did it take you? All in all, it took uh, six editing sessions. Each one was a month long. And uh, so the first week when we just started to editing, because uh, I believe in Paris, I lived in Moscow. So I came to him to Paris and it was... Uh, March 2020, so the pandemic hit. And I had to go back, and for the next uh, year and a half, we were editing through Skype, which was also a difficult experience. You cannot interrupt each other, <laughs> because then you don't hear each other at all. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, but the last editing session uh, we did in person in Norway, so it was very helpful, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you think the music and the soundtrack from, from what moment on you could also count on, I mean, you have um, this from Joy Division and so, so you, you, did you know you could, you would be able to pay the the real royalties? <laughs> or did you just take it and say, well, we, we'll see what come up? <laughs> so how was yeah, the how was the production budget? Were you kind of safe, or was it like work in progress? Um, well, it was work in progress because uh, I think my producers were applying on the way for for yeah. I'm not sure like how exactly it worked. I was busy with some other things, but yeah, everybody is asking about Joy Division. It's I think it was the most expensive. I guess so, uh, and whole music. as well. Yeah, and uh, but um, we, yeah, we just thought that it makes so much sense to the story, and then later because uh, we're using it in this uh, the the music in the end, the music with bosses, so we thought it's worth uh, buying it, and all in all, since it's also a film about um, Maya and Kimi's growing up. Um, I thought that music, I should use music that kind of, uh, you know, made us. So it would make sense to use something that we were listening a lot and something like in this same style kind of. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was just curious because, I mean, people make films with the budget which only this piece costs, so, so I, I guess. <laughs> so, so everybody who knows about, what is it, Universal or something, or who is the right owner, so knows, okay, well, this is big. Uh, so, but no, uh, congratulations, I mean, the music is awesome. Thank you. And the sound <laughs> editing as well. Um, how was it for you to not to get mixed and mingled up in the drug scene? How did you come out without getting deeper? I think because, maybe because I was uh, uh, shooting a lot and it kind of made sense for me to explore the world with camera and also because I participated in this uh, anti-government uh, demonstrations and protests, so maybe I had the feeling that there is something I can change, probably, and I guess Kimi didn't feel the same, so he was, maybe he was just more depressed than I was, I think, that's why. But at the beginning, when, when, when we see the images, who filmed you in the beginning? Uh, where exactly? <laughs> well, in, the, in the beginning of the film, when yeah. you're like 16, and who filmed you in, in the concert or in, at, at home? Or? Uh, some, some, uh, so there's a lot of footage. For, yeah, so many people. <laughs> I think where I'm smoking a cigarette and walking with the pigtails, or how do you call it? It's uh, we were filming something with my music band, and it was part of this like music video we thought we would make or something like that. Oh, yeah, what happened to the band? Uh, it uh, uh, we stopped at some point um, because we didn't. We weren't like. Uh, you know, at some point, if you're not doing it professionally, then you, you ask yourself, like, why do I spend my time, you know, playing? And everybody was getting more busy with work, family, so it's, uh, yeah, in the end, uh, some of my friends are still playing, but they do it professionally, and I, I don't. I just play for myself sometimes. Um, what was very astonishing was to see the, the political layers when it started being Russia, no, you, you say, and, and there's also in this football, um, um, what was it, UEFA or the European? Euro 2008. Yeah, the, the Europe 2008, yeah, when they say, um, this is Russia, Europe, we're coming, or something, no? That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of scary now. Yeah, you know? yeah. if so you see it today, in the, in the context today, say, okay, wow, um, it was there from the very beginning. But on the other side, I wouldn't take things that football uh, fans shout around too seriously, but if you put it into context, you say, okay. And if you see Putin, and if you see all this from, from this moment, how do you feel with the situation your country is in right now and you are in right now? You mean the war yeah. and everything? Well, it's, I feel terrible. It's terrible what's happening. And it's, uh, uh, yeah, there's like, not sure what to do with it, you know, like, what, I mean, I help donate to help refugees and, uh, do what I can, but it's. Uh, I think a lot of people are asking, what can they do to stop this war now? And yeah, what, what happened to you personally? Uh, uh, me, and my boyfriend, we had to leave Russia when the war started, because we're both we were participating in uh, uh, anti-government protests, anti-war protests, and uh, so the police knew where we lived. And my boyfriend spent some time in prison for, you know, being part of peaceful protest. So uh, it just felt like uh, it would be more sense if we're not in jail. And for so we thought we should live and we left. And where do you live now? Uh, not sure, <laughs> here and there. I'm couch surfing. I mean, right now I have this, uh, 
great opportunity to not think about it because of the festivals. I'm not sure like where I'm going to end up. So you're on a way right now, on the road. Yeah, maybe I have... Following your film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I have this subconscious... I don't know, maybe I believe that maybe like in a couple of months, I don't know, a miracle happens, Putin dies, and suddenly, suddenly it's like this uh, yeah. great, nice country I could return to. But uh, maybe if we drink holy water, it will yeah, happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, you know, the, the idea that I would never see my grandparents and my mom, it's uh, something I'm trying not to think. It's kind of like sad and scary. Terrific. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, just uh, thinking about it is... Um, in the film, you portray the Kim's, Kimi's family, but your family is kind of completely out of it, just for the, for the little images of this um, Christmas Eve. Why? Where, where were your parents when you were 16 and you got into all this grunge scene and you met Kimi and you were there and you lived there? Well, I guess there are like two reasons, uh, or basically one reason since uh, uh, there weren't too many f uh, shootings with me and my family because, uh, well, <laughs> I think all of the shootings with me, you can see it in the film, mm -hmm. since I'm usually filming and it was hard to find something with me. And also, in the beginning, I thought this film would be just about Kimi. And then I realized that I'm also one of the characters. And uh, then I had to rethink the, the story, the material, and everything. So going back to my family, uh, there weren't too much f footage with them. And uh, we, I think, uh, at that time, uh, we weren't that uh, like close, as close as, for example, Kimi and his mom, I think. Now we are much closer, but back then we didn't know how to, mm -hmm. how to talk. <laughs> I understand. Are there questions from the audience? I'm sure they are. Don't be shy. Yes. think that you saved him with the You like the title very much, you said? Yeah. So the, the question was, do you think that you saved him? And she likes well, the title very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of it as um, I'm trying to save his memory, because I think that you're, you're, as long as people remember you, you're still here in a way. So that's... Uh, that's the that's the point, I guess. Yeah, you can't really save somebody with that kind of addiction. You can be at his side, what you did. But the you, the, the 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 great thing about the film is also that the, the process of alienation. If you deal with somebody with this kind of addiction. From the me from the moment where you realize that the drug will always be more important than you, and then you have this alienation, you start living your own life, but you step one step back, but you still are kind of friends and somebody who's there. That was very very impressing. Yeah, maybe this another question. Oh, hello. hello. Hello, thanks for the film festival. I'd like to know um, how you've got the message which was written in the end, like the goodbye message by Kimi. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was it a letter or did he spoken it on tape? Yeah, and how did you get it? Uh, he recorded it for me uh, approximately a year before his death. And um, he used to write a lot of uh, things and poems and texts and sometimes he dedicated to uh, people close to him but uh, unfortunately he didn't record it uh, 
many of them. This one he recorded for me and he sent it to me. And um, yeah, I was very upset when I got it. And uh, But at the same time, I was very touched. So when we were making the film, I knew that I really want this uh, letter poem to be there. It would make so much sense. And especially with this music, I felt like, in a way, it's like, uh, um, lyrics to the song or something like that. Yeah. And when did you get it? After his death or before? When did you get it? Before uh, he died or after? Yeah, a year before. A year, uh, he gave it to you a yeah, year he before? Yeah, he sent it to okay. me. Oh, yeah, I see. Any other question? Um, was it difficult to, for you to share these um, like deeply personal images like had you like was it difficult for you to show it to such a broad audi audience or was it like a natural thing to do for you uh yeah it was very difficult especially the decision that i'm one of the characters i for some time it was very hard for me to accept it because i'm usually not in front of the camera so but i guess when I took this decision, it also helped me to create this distance between me and my character. And it helped me uh, to grieve somehow. It was very helpful, um, you know, psychological, like a therapeutic thing. Mm. But yeah, I guess the first three weeks when we just started to work with the editor and I was showing him all this, you know, private, personal footage that I wasn't shooting for the film, so it's like not the perfect shots and frames. I was sweating, <laughs> I was really nervous, but he was really cool about it, and uh, he's really good in this sense. So, um, right now, I'm since it's all there, and I've seen it so many times, it's, um, yeah, I feel f fine with sharing it. I think because there's this distance. And is there footage um, that you left out on purpose because it was too personal or um, did you just use the footage you saw, um, you saw best fit for the movie? Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think all the footage I really wanted to be in the film, we were trying to, m to, to make it into the film. Um, but something like, n no, I thought for this film, per th it's a personal film, so it would make sense to have personal footage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Could you take the mic, please? Thank you. Um, in the film, we saw that you um, cut yourself and you hurt yourself. So my question is, how did you find a way out of this? So for a long time, I wasn't aware that I was depressed. I thought that this is just how life feels. And I think uh, eventually when I was 30, I went uh, to see a psychiatrist and uh, then, so uh, yeah, I went to the psychotherapy and took antidepressants and I kind of, um, since that time is easier <laughs> for me. So I know that it's, this is not how the life feels. This is how I feel and uh, it's, yeah. Sometimes it's better. <laughs> Thank you. Was this film shown in Moscow? Not, not, not yet. But I really want to show it there. But um, I don't know when, how, and if it would be possible at all. Because for it to be shown in Russia, you have to obtain this um, uh, permission. permission. Yeah. And for that, we would have to cut all the cursing. Um, we would have to take out the names of uh, drugs. Oh. Uh, 
Um, okay, it's a short film then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and probably oh, this um, this shot uh, with the title of the film in the beginning, where Kim is portray portrayed as Jesus mm -hmm. cooking up. All right. Uh, oh, this okay. because this is a criminal offense, but um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know when and where and how. I think it would be important to show it in Russia. Has, has Kimi's mother seen the film? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, we're, it was just hard to her to go to any festivals now because it's hard to fly from Russia to anywhere. But I hope she will. I mean, I really want her to watch it on the big screen in the cinema. But if it's not going to work out, I'll just, you know, show it on the laptop. Send it a link. Last round. Yeah. Thank you for the film. Um, it's really, I mean, uh, individual. And it's so, I mean, um, I like the story, but it was so hard to watch because the distance, you didn't have any distance between you and st story. And you have already experienced this story. And maybe my question is a little bit, um, I mean, you don't have to answer it, but I was wondering what was your, how you could bear this situation when you were shooting him when he was using drugs? And you were sober or you were using also drugs when you were shooting? Because it is, I mean, it's hard to watch or to see uh, when someone was dying. Uh, what was your motivation? I'm wondering this. So there, there are times when we're both using, there are times when he's just using, and uh, it wasn't like I could have told him, like, don't, don't do drugs, and he would stop, uh, because, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've tried it, and it's never working unless the person wants to not do drugs. And uh, sometimes camera actually helped, uh, uh, it was like a shield, it made, created like a distance, it made things not so real. Like for example, when Kimi was in mental institution and seeing him there, there was really hard and especially how um, uh, they were giving him a lot of meds and he was clearly not getting better. So in times like that, camera helped me to, to not, to, to, you know, to, to have this distance. Yeah. But you stop early, isn't it? I guess you stop. Mm? Sorry, what? You stop dragging early, I guess. I mean, did you stop dr drugging early oh. when you were? Uh, I think, like, I think that, I believe that Kim, probably Kimi was maybe more depressed than I was because I think that's why he was probably doing so much drugs and uh, drinking and, you know, doing all like this dangerous stuff because he was trying to self-medicate and uh, try not to feel what he felt. And uh, uh, I was also depressed, but probably in a different way. Therefore, I wasn't, you know, too much involved with everything. Anybody? Yeah. Um, maybe that's a weird question, but um, you before you met Kimi, you told in the film that you planned on this being your last year. Um, so did Kimi somehow help you to find again the will to live longer than only one year, even though he died? Like, did he kind of give you back your will to live like maybe I, yeah 
that's not a real question. It's actually a very sweet one. Yes, I think that when I met him and we fell in love, it was very helpful for me to see someone who's uh, uh, just like me, having the same uh, feelings about the world and supports me and, you know, and yeah, I think uh, he was the reason that I wanted to keep, you know, to keep on going and starting a family and stuff like that. So when he left, you didn't feel like leaving too anymore or was there a point where you maybe also again thought about taking your own life because Kimi left now? Well, when, when he died, you mean? Yeah, when, yeah, when he died. Yeah, it was a very hard time. It was really, really hard time for me. But I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, did he die God. or did he suicide? No, uh, he had um, heart problems that he wasn't aware of. So, um, of course, uh, the drug abuse and uh, alcohol and all this uh, meds that uh, unprescribed meds that he took uh, like aff affected this condition. But uh, yeah, it was a fast death. But um, relating to your question about, I love what you say that he made you laugh. And that's so, so important and, and wonderful if you find somebody you kind of match in interest in being crazy and the same grunge music and post-punk things and so. But if this person is somebody who makes you laugh, then that's it. Yeah, I love a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then thank you very much. You're going, Thank after you. this festival, you're going to Israel, to Tel Aviv? No. I'm going to Cannes Film Your first, festival. you're going to Cannes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, there. so tell your friends in Cannes, the film is going to be screened there. And afterwards, tell your film in Tel Aviv or in Israel. Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv. the film is going to be screened there. And thank you very much for coming.